Welcome to another RSR. Tonight I'm reacting to the news of Latif Blessing being traded to Toronto FC for Mark Anthony K, who is going the other way to the New England Revolution. Yeah, this video is a bit late, but again, Gold Cup was yesterday. I sort of did waste my time today, but it is what it is. So, let's talk about this trade. Latif Blessing to Toronto for Mark Anthony K. Let's start with Mark Anthony K getting traded out to the New England Revolution. To me personally, K did not do well enough in Toronto. He's fallen off a cliff for a good amount of his recent career. Bradley sent him out of LA, brings him back to Toronto after he had a run with the Rapids. But Again, maybe he needs a change of scenery, but you could have said that for the Rapids deal. I think K is pretty much, he's done pretty much, for any really big amount of football that he has left to give. I think he's pretty much done, but we'll see what happens later on. But they do have Harks, they have Buck, Esmir. They don't really need Mark Anthony K, which it's wild. I get that Esmir and Buck will be gone at some point soon, but taking K for Latif, they legitimately just let themselves get highway robbery. They did, because Latif still has a lot to give. I think he fits the Toronto system more than Mark Anthony K did. Besides, we need more offensive creation out of the midfield that arguably might be better than Jonathan Osorio. I love Jonathan. I think he's a great player, but right now, I think we need a player like Latif, or we play Oso as a false nine, Latif in front of Ibarra, Coelho, and then Cervania to destroy, be a midfield destroyer as a super sub, or maybe start so often, but still. With that being said, I like the deal for Latif Blessing. I think he's a great midfielder. He is a very good, pacey midfielder. Could play the ball forward. He could also play the wing, play wing back, which might be needed depending on if they keep Richie or not. But I do have to say that Jason Hernandez, before this deal, said all the roster spots were, feel were filled. And I'm going to guess that Short-term loans don't really count against that, or that's something different. So what that makes me think is them bringing in Abara was the last slot. They had Richie penciled in. They're trying to bring him back. Latif gets traded, takes, or traded in, takes Mark's spot. I think Richie's staying. From what Jason said, it sounds to me like Richie's staying, but that's just my guess. So I don't think we need Latif to play wing back if there is a difference. But Jaquil plays it well. Petretta plays it well. Kobe Franklin plays it well. Even in that case, if Richie wasn't to come back, I don't think we need an extra wing back. I mean, yeah, injuries and all that, but still. I think Latif is here to play midfield. I think he's here to play midfield and on the wing. Maybe cut through, push forward, play the wing as well. Add some more threat on the ball. Because let's be honest, our striker isn't a threat. If you play Oso as a false nine, there's more of a threat there. You have Insigne Bernadeschi. Maybe Jaquil if he has to play up forward or Kerr. We don't have many threats on the ball that you could be like, oh, they might just shoot. Oh, they might just create something here. Yeah, they can pass, but can they finish their own dinner? Yeah, Cervania's had a couple of moments. Coelho looks like he could if he needed to. But Oso, you play him as a false nine, and then have Kirby a super sub, and then you have Latif in midfield playing balls forward, can finish if need be. His numbers aren't that great finishing-wise, but he can if need be. He does have more danger to him than Coelho or Cervania or Abara, and Abara does sort of have a danger. Thing to him, you know? 
So my point is, is Toronto at, is in this summer, Richie does if he stays, Toronto this summer is sort of trying to add more danger on the ball to where you can't double Insigne, you can't double Bernadeschi. You are giving Bernadeschi and Insigne better players to play around as well. These moves aren't big, big moves, but they are something. And I've said this before. I think personally, with the 11 we have now, if it was me, I would have Sean Johnson starting in goal. The back four, if Richie doesn't stay, would be Franklin, Mabaka, Hedges, Jaquiel. If Richie were to stay, Richie would be in that back line. The midfield three, Abara, Coelho, Latif, Blessing, front three, and Senior Bernadeschi also is a false nine. That would be my thought process because we have no striker. I like DeAndre, but I think he's better as a, a super sub at this point. DeAndre can play the nine. He can play super sub if need be. You could also pull off Insigne or Bernadeschi and have him play the wing and Oso still plays false nine. Oso can finish. You've seen it before when TFC have been more crap because his best seasons have came when the team is crap. That's the truth. It's wild, to be honest. 2013, his rookie year, team was crap. 2018, post-Champions League, team was crap, but he was still on form. 2021, yeah. 2022, yeah. This year, not so much, but you know what? We have the room to try to pull something through here. So, what I think is you put Oso as the false nine and just go from there. I think that is something that is needed to be done. I think you could do it, personally. We have no striker. You got to make the best out of it. Oso can finish. He can have a striker moment or two. You play him false nine. If he makes that run in behind, he certainly does. You open up the spot for Latif. You have Coelho and Ibarra in defensive midfield. One can push forward a little bit more. Or Servania if you wanted to do it. But at least I'd start with Coelho. I think he deserves that. But you could. Servania could be a starter or come in in the midfield when need be. He's still playing. So again, you need to open up that spot for Latif at the top of the midfield. That's when Oso plays the false nine. Point being is, is Latif opens up a lot of options here that I think should be thought over personally. Oso shouldn't sit on the bench for the rest of the season. I don't think so. I mean, even if he isn't as good as he used to be, which you could argue since he's been hurt, you could argue, or even the past year, you could argue. Personally, for me, I'd still rather him be a false nine than us play an actual striker because Sapong is dr dreadful. Dio hasn't done nothing. He needs to go. Kerr is great, but he's more on the wing but he could be a super sub striker, but he's not really that. He's more of a Gabriel Jesus type striker than a normal number nine, you know? Sort of, you get it? You get what I'm saying there? So, and then Peruza ain't got a shot, which I wish he could get a shot, but they don't want to give him a shot. So there you go. Batiste, could be that guy. I think he's talented. But honestly, at this point, to me, it really should be Batiz, Kerr, and Peruza being the super subs. And Sapong experiment over. Dio experiment over. Don't even try. You know, it's done. So, again, Oso is the false nine. It's honestly the best decision. You let Latif play that dual 8-10 roll, you let Latif do that, you let Oso be the false nine, and Senior Bernadeschi on the wings, 
and I think you could get some out of it. So I like the move, and I think it opens up a lot of opportunities here. So I'd, I'd like to see Latif play the way he needs to play at this club. I think it's a nice change of scenery. He did get outplayed by Buck and those midfielders at New England, but to be honest, I don't think the system fit him anyway, you know? I don't really think New England system fit Latif anyway. It does fit K more. I think Toronto's system, the what they want, whether it's a new manager, whether it's Terry or anything, the system that they want, I think Latif fits better. So I think this is a good deal for both sides. Better for Toronto, but I think New England could get some out of K, which I'm surprised they didn't even want to get Tam from us or something. So that's something. So with that being said, if you like this video, like it, share, subscribe, you know what it is, tell your friends, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification one, subscribe, send super chats on the live streams, comment on this video, put us to play this, share with friends and family, all that great stuff. I shall see you tomorrow for the Gold Cup final prediction, but I will touch on the semifinals as well. But I will predict the Gold Cup final, Mexico versus Panama. I'll see you on Saturday for Chicago versus Toronto. And I'll see you on Sunday for the Gold Cup final. So with that being said, see you then. I'm Ron and I'm out. Peace. See you.